Over to you, Sister Carrie. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, beautiful people. Yeah. Thank you all for joining the Canada Virtuous Women Prayer and Bible Study Meeting. It's always an honor, always a pleasure for you to join us, to make time out of your busy schedule to be part of us tonight. And it is our prayer that God will meet each and every one of us at our point of need. And that after everything has been said and done, Jesus will be glorified. So tonight, before I introduce the vessel the Lord has prepared for us, I would like us to say a word of prayer. Let's invite the Holy Spirit and ask him to take control because it says when two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. So let's ask him to take control of the meeting and have his way. Let's pray in Jesus' name. If you can pray in tongues, go ahead and blast in tongues. Let's pray. Thank you for the word that you have for each and every one of us today. Take control. Holy Father, that we take control, that sweet Jesus. Jesus. Father, we commit this meeting into your hands. Over this we pray, O oh God, that you will have your way. Speak to us, Lord, O God, that our hearts will be a better ground for your for your word, O God. That your word will fall into our hearts and produce fruit, fruits that will last. But I put a hundredfold, O God. Arrest, O God, every form of distraction. Arrest every distraction, every understanding of your word, that your word will go with power and might, oh God, but that to, to bring the Lord, oh God, to bring healing, oh God, and to meet us, oh God, at our point of need. Father, quicken our spirit, oh God, give us a spirit, oh God, give us a heart to receive your word. Father, that Hallelujah. 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 Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tonight, I am honored. I have the privilege to introduce to us tonight the vessel the Lord has prepared on this special day of February. We are so glad to have our visitor. She is a virtuous woman a woman who fears the Lord, a visionaire of the Canada Virtuous Women, our own mama in the house, our own mama in the house. Oh, so I, I, I challenge you, get your books, get your pens ready, because we're going to write in this, in this month of love, as she closes the month of love, we're going to have a date with Jesus. Yes, so. So help me welcome our very own head girl, Sister Adeline Ijang, Apostle, Aka Apostle. <laughs> welcome, Mama. Welcome. Over to you. <laughs> Point of correction. <laughs> Say Apostle. You are one. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Jerry. Just love you. I love your sister. We are in this together. Welcome, Canada Virtuous Women. It's a joy to be here tonight. I kind of like it when it is interactive and, uh, and we talk to each other because this is a love affair tonight. It's a love affair. So we are going to be talking much about love tonight and, and how what we could do in order to, to, to conquer hate in our midst, how we could do or what we could do in order to deal with those kind of faces that we just put, we call them poker faces. That we call them poker faces. So we are gonna we're gonna just um, have it a little bit of interactive. And so if you if you if you just have an answer to something, have an idea, God is dropping something in your heart. By all means, go ahead and just throw it in the chat. Or you want to talk about it? We talk about it and and go from there. And uh, but tonight it's um, a meeting that I just want us to talk about what we've been talking all through the month of February, which was our month of loving the unlovable. And so tonight my message would be just titled loving the unlovable. 
us loving the unlovable. Let me just fix my camera a little bit tilted. Us loving the unlovable and um, what we could do in order to be able to conquer hatred. How can we do? What are the things that even make us to hate on people and dislike people? So far, we've talked a lot of things about, about how we could love and steps that we could love from our retreat to our ministrations throughout the month to the ministration at the St. Timothy Church that I did. Uh, a few of you were there and um, we're talking about love all through and how we could love each other. I pray that as we advance tonight, as we progress tonight, as we round up tonight, this very short month and one of the shortest months of the year or the shortest month of the year, what we have learned so far, the things that we have learned so far that we will carry it throughout the year will be able to help us. And not only throughout the year, but till Jesus comes. Because it is very important and very important in the sense that the Bible says that the greatest of it, so faith, hope, and love, it says the greatest of it all is love. So if love is the greatest thing, it means that there are so many things that you and I can conquer just by loving, just by dealing with this problem of hatred in our lives. And so the first scripture that I'm going to be reading tonight will be from the book of John. I'm going to dwell on the book of John for quite some time. So you might as well just keep your Bibles right there. I would turn to my first scripture would be let me do John chapter 13 first. I wanted to do, to do John chapter 15, but I will do John chapter 13. Let me read that first, the verse number 34, right up to verse number 38. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also, love one another by this all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another or if you have love for one another and as simon peter said to him lord where are you going jesus answered where i am going you cannot follow me now but you shall follow me afterwards peter said to him lord why can i not follow you I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Hallelujah. He says the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. And this is Jesus saying he gives a command because he is trying to predict in this passage, his departure. He's trying to predict, he's trying to tell, to predict Peter denying him and telling him that he's going to go. He's trying to tell them that he'll be going, but Peter doesn't seem to, to, to get it, to understand it. But Jesus was not out to get them to understand anyway. He just wanted to give them a commandment. And he says to him that a new commandment I'm giving to you, that you love one another. So love is so important that it becomes a command that Jesus is giving the disciples that you are only going to succeed in this thing if we love one another. You and I, virtuous woman, we will only be able to be successful and make our mark in this generation if we love one another. If we throw away our malice and love one another, that is the only way that we will thrive as women just loving one another without condition, no strings attached. But Jesus is telling, Peter says here that he will lay down his life for Jesus. It's a lie. And this is exactly what most of us do most of the time. We lie. We just say we love you, whereas we don't really. Well, sometimes we think that we do, but we don't really. And so we just say those things that we love you, but the last thing that I do to you, off you go. The last thing that I do to you, just as far as just maybe raising my voice or saying something to you, you are, you're done with me. But you did say that you love me. I did say that I love you. 
but I forget the fact that I said that I love you the moment you raise your voice to me. And Jesus is telling Peter right here that, <laughs> you, did you say you love me? He said, the rooster will not crow three times before you deny me. And, and, and Peter must have probably thought Jesus is crazy. I just love the character of Peter in the Bible because it's a, in another passage where Jesus was talking with him, Jesus says, Simon Peter, do you really love me? Say, so yes, I love you. And Jesus asked three times. Then he said the third time, you know that I love you. After he says, feed the lamb, tell my sheep, do this. And, and Peter, the third time Jesus said, he says to Jesus, that you know that I love you. You do know that I love you. But you see the kind of love that we have treated the, the four kinds of love previously, which I'm not going to dwell on those in this particular meeting. But the kind of love that Peter was talking about is the one we call filial love. Just loving him because he is the Christ because he is the leader. The kind of love that you would just love somebody because this is our leader, I just love him. But Jesus is asking for the agape kind of love and that kind of love would only come after Jesus is ascended and the spirit of God comes. Because for the agape love to be part of you, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot have the agape kind of love. Your love, will just be the filial love, the filial kind of love, love for a burden. And that kind of love, you can easily slide at the listing, at the listing. That kind of love where we used to sit, me and my girlfriend, and, and, and sometimes she's talking when we were in the university and I'm not even listening to what she's saying. I'm busy doing my thing, but the only time that she would know that I was listening or she, I would know that she was listening is when the other person makes a mistake in what, what they're saying and then we burst into laughter. <laughs> and we think that we love the other person, but we're actually making a mockery of them because they did something wrong. We, are, we love, but we, we are so quick to see mistakes. You see, my girlfriend was, was so quick to, she, she could pick easily on my mistakes the same way I could pick for her. Don't get me wrong, because it was the same that I was doing for her. I could easily pick mistakes. But when they're saying a good thing, I cannot easily pick it up. But the least mistake, that's when you will know that I was listening, because I will burst into some serious kind of laughter. Just by a slip of the tongue or something that you mispronounce a word. Because I'm there, not actually listening. I'm just waiting to see you make mistakes. But then I turn around and say that I love you. Ha! Ah. Hypocrisy of the first order that we mix with our love. And that is, the, that is, that is, that is, what, that is what Jesus was talking here. When, G, when Peter, he says to Peter that the cock is not going to crow three times. He said it will crow before, three times. Before it crows three times, you, would have, you have denied me. Before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. Can you imagine? From that time, by the way, talking. Say before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. And it happened. It happens because if you do not have the spirit of God in you, if you do not have the spirit of God that reminds you, that sets an alarm inside of you to not do this, not do this, to correct you, it will be hard for you to have the agape kind of love. The one that is sacrificial without condition. The one that you would know that even if I do something wrong, you would know that, hey, let me go back. Let me talk with him like, like, uh, uh, um, Reverend Dr. Mercy Fulu was talking to us the other day about offense. I'm not even going to belabor that point because she already dealt with it. It was just like the Spirit of God was talking to her because this was the month where we needed a word like that. God was definitely in it. God was definitely in it when we decided that this is the month where we will be loving the unlovable. Who is the unlovable? The unlovable, sometimes you might think that the unlovable is me that is talking to you or my brother or my sister. No, the unlovable sometimes is you not even being able to love yourself because if you cannot love yourself, you will not be able to love the other person. <laughs> if you do not even love yourself, you will not even be able to love the next person. Because, because the reaction that you are reacting towards me, the thing that you are doing to me, 
It's actually a reflection of what is going on in the inside of you. I like the thing that I was I put on my wall here. Say, hurting people will hurt others. Hurting people will hurt others. Because you're hurting, you also hurt other people. Because you will express that anger that is in you, that hurt that is in you. You are sending it out. Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And so the spirit that is in you, taking control of you when you are hurting, when you are angry, it is what you are, you are, you are spreading out to another person. And so if in the inside of you is rotten, it is rottenness that you would pull out of you. Hurting people hurt others. Thank you, Sister Margaret. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so if you are in pain, you would express that pain. And so sometimes the unlovable that I'm talking here would be you, yourself. Because sometimes you are disappointed with yourself that at this time I should have been here. I should have done this. Ah, I should have been here. This is what I should have done. This is where I should have been. And so you are hurting. And maybe you see some other person that was far behind you, overtaking. Because life is full of overtaking and taking over. And so you begin to hurt. Or maybe you've just seen something or watched something or seen something on Facebook that is causing you so much hurt and you begin to hurt. And then your hurting is even expressed even in your writings or in what you say or in what you do. Even if you don't voice it out, sometimes the things that you would do or just your body language will speak volumes. And at that time, the first person that you need to love is you. The first person that you need to deal with is you. It's not the other person. Somebody can throw an insult at you and you hate on that person and you don't like that person. But in this case, most of the cases, the person that you need to fix first is you. You need to fix you. Once you fix you, it is so easy for you and I to fix the other people. Because the way we fix the other people is not that we go to them and begin to fix them. No, we fix them with our character by showing them love. Jesus is telling the disciples that a new commandment that I give to you, that you love one another. That you love one another. But there is no way that you would dispense love when there is hurt in your heart. Lie. It's, it's a big lie. You cannot fool anybody. You fool only your own self. The only person that you will fool, the first person that you will deceive is you. Because when I am hurting inside of me, no matter how I, I try to camouflage and put on a poker face, it, is still, it would still be judged some way, somehow. Some, somebody will pick it up. And sometimes when I am hurting like that or something just disturbs me, I don't want to go out of the house because I know that the next person is going to pick on it. Because I'm always one of those people that when I'm not happy, you would easily, you can easily tell because when I'm happy, I am all over the place. Jolly, jolly. I like my little girl uh, and be here all the time that she will always see me and say, uh, auntie, are you all right? Uh, you don't seem to be all right. Just simply because she knows that this auntie is somebody that likes to smile. And so when I see her, frowning, there's something most likely wrong. And so sometimes when you're hurting like that, you just want to keep quiet and just be yourself because you know that what will come out of your mouth will be hurt. So tonight, how are, how are we going to do in order to be able to love the unlovable? Because sometimes you think that the unlovable of course, the unlovable sometimes can be a sibling. I, I have suffered with loving a sibling of mine that takes so much advantage of me. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. That too has its own place. It's another point that we are going to talk about. But loving the unlovable, you have to love yourself in a way that nobody else will love you more than you. Before you love one another, as Jesus is saying here, he says, love one another, love the other person, love your neighbor, love your child. But if you do not, first of all, deal with your own self to emit love, because you loving one another, the love is a reflection of what is going in the inside of you. And so if your inside is hate, there is no way you would love one another. 
And so that's why I want us to first of all deal with us, the unlovable us. That part of us that sometimes when I put on my dress, that some love handles are coming out. I'm like, I wish I could go back to my days when I could go back to what my size that I was 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And then I just start getting frustrated. And then I will throw this dress down and pick this one and throw it down and this one and try this one. It will not fit. And then I just get so frustrated and end up maybe just carrying something and throwing on myself. And then I carry it out there and begin to, to, to frown my face with everybody else as if they cost it. No, it's me. As if they cost it, but it is me struggling with me, fighting with me. The physical me is fighting with the spiritual me, trying to unite the spirit with the body. And so tonight I try to put down some points as to, as to the things that happen. And, and why, do we, why do we not love? What is it that makes us not love? Because we have talked so much this month about loving, loving people. If you were not in our retreat, then you would not be able to pick up because we're just picking up from where we ended. So if you attended the retreat, then you would be able to understand because I've left out so many things about love that we have already discussed in the retreat in February. And we actually gave ourselves a challenge. I hope to God that each and every one of us found something. And as I am talking right now, I want you to begin to think, what action did I do? The French man will say, le bon action. Quel bon action que vous avez pris ce mois de février? What good deed did you do this February? Because I gave us an assignment that let's be deliberate. Find somebody, find a stranger, find someone and just do a good deed to them. I know that we do it quite often. We don't doubt it because today, some widows were lifting up their hands in Taraba State in Jalingo, in Taraba State in Nigeria, because of us. That is a good deed that each and every one of us can lift up our hands and say, heaven will remember us. I am sure if you have gone through the post in the group, you would see the video where a widow would, would kneel down just, just because of 20,000 naira, which is about, I don't even know how much that would be here, about $50 or so, or 60, $60, $70 that is given to her and she cries out. It was, so, it, it was so emotional to me when I was watching that video because I understand a little bit of Hausa. I grew, up, I, I grew up in a land where Muslims were mixed with Muslims. The people called the people, uh, this uh, Muslim people called the Hausa people. So I could understand what she was saying. And so for that reason, it, each and every one of us who have been contributing to the widow's funds can, 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 can be able to say this February, I did something good for a stranger. But apart from that, what else did you do? Did you remember to go talk to that sister that you've had in your mind for quite some time? Did you remember to say, this person, I have not had a good relationship or I don't, when I think about her, there is still some pain or something that, that does something in me. Let me just, let me make some peace. Let me talk it out. Did we do that? Apart from that, did we remember to show love to strangers, spreading the love of God? Or maybe just praying for somebody, calling somebody, bonding with a sister. Like, did you follow the sister born for this month of February to call every sister? Like, let's be honest. Did we show love? It's not too late if you did not. You can still do it. Because this is a commandment that Jesus is giving us. He's not saying that we do it just in February. We are going to do it until his return. Spreading the love of God the agape kind of love, that one that you sacrifice, you go out of your way to do good to somebody with no expectation. We're not expecting anything back. We're just doing it. We might never see those widows in Jalingo. We may never see them till Jesus comes. But we feel a sense of fulfillment that we have done our own bit for humanity. We have put a smile on somebody's face. We have spread the love of God that a woman will bow down to say, Nagodi Allah, say, thank you, Lord. Because of you, you are spreading the love of God. James said, true religion is to take care of the poor. 
orphans, widows, the destitute people, prisoners. That is true religion. But even as you go out to take care of those poor, if you do not love yourself, if, if you go to them, you will start ex But let your tears, when you see people like that, when the tears that come out of you would be tears of love, that, that oh God, if I did not do this, there is another passage I'm going to read in the Bible tonight because I have a few points that I just want us to, to talk about, about the things that, that, that stop us from, from loving. And that would be John chapter number 15. I'm going to read the verse number nine. Um, that's going to be a long read. It's going to be num verse number nine, right up, up to somewhere around 19, mm, not 17. Verse number nine, right up to 17. It says, as the father loved me, I also have loved you. I love this one. It says, abide in me or abide in my love. This is verse nine. It says, as the father loves me. You see that? So if you don't love your children to teach them love, it will be difficult for them too to love. So this love thing is something that we need to teach one another. We need to teach one another. We need to practice it. It says, as the father loves me. So imagine that your father did not love your mother or your father hated you. So you've grown up in hatred, in bitterness. So it's going to take you some time. It's going to be a process for you to also learn how to love back. Jesus is saying here that just as the father loved me, because the father has taught him how to love. If the father didn't teach him love, what would he have offered? It says, as the father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy or that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do, you call, do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should, should remain. That whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you these things I command you that you love one another. What I wanted us to pick from this long passage that I read is the fact that love, you can contaminate people with love. The same way you can contaminate people with hatred, you can contaminate people with love. I asked the somebody's phone uh, 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 device that is echoing, can, can you mute, please? Somebody, if you're unmuted, please just mute yourself. When I finish, then you can unmute. Mama Benes, it's you. Please mute yourself. I don't know what has gone. Please mute yourself. I don't know what has gone. I'm trying to correct it. Hold on. Okay, she's muted now. Please just stay on mute until, until I'm done because it's interfering, the, the echoes are coming through. Okay, so what I was trying to say is that Jesus is telling us that love is contradictory or it is, is contaminating, sorry. It's contaminating. You contaminate somebody with love because he got it from the Father. And so what he has received from the Father is what he's passing on. What are you giving your children? Are you teaching them to love? If you are, excellent. 
you are doing a great job. What are you giving the people around you, your neighbors, the strangers, your co-workers? Are you teaching them love or are you retaliating? The only way you and I can preach this gospel is through our characters. If we don't do it through our characters, it's going to be very difficult for us to preach because you cannot be a hater and then you go ahead to preach love. No, there's no way that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, Mama Benis, I think you unmuted yourself again. Okay, she's muted. Please stay on mute because the moment you unmute is causing an echo and just it is distracting. So, okay. I don't know, it's echoing from my end, but now it's okay. Right. So there's no way you would be able to ask your child to love when you are not teaching them love. And so Jesus is taking it from the father. See, the same way that my father loved me, that's the way I am loving you. You see, that's, that's already telling us, you and I, that there is a problem somewhere. Because if we did not grow up in the house where there is love, and so we are, we're going to have to struggle. We're only going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit to teach us at this point in time in our lives. And I bet you that many of you and many of you, including me, have struggled, maybe come from those homes where we did not see that much love. And so we struggle with loving. And because we did not see that much love, we struggle because we can only, as children, they learn from the parents. Even though we are living in a world, in this part of the world where a lot is being learned from school because they spend more, more of their time with the teachers. When they come home, maybe it's to eat and then go to bed. But most of the time, the children learn from the parents. And so if they did not, you did not see love, if you grew up in a house where maybe you saw your dad, beating your mom or your dad cheating on your mom and all of that that's all you saw and that those memories still play in you and so it would take the grace of god for you and i to be able to love genuinely and so if you and i have this understanding we'll be able to know that i don't expect my sister to show me all the love that i that i'm that i'm looking for in the world i have to be love an epitome of love i have to be loving in order to attract love this is why I say to ourselves that the unlovable is actually me, myself. Because sometimes I struggle with loving myself. Do I really love me? Do I really love me? Because if I love me, then the love will radiate from the inside of me, then it would spill out on others. Every time there is hatred in me, if I am sending it out, then the spirit that I'm sending out is not the spirit of love. The Bible says God is love. And if we are his descendants, if we are his offspring, his children, then we ought to be children of love. And so if you are in Christ, if you are the new creation in Christ, then the Holy Spirit will be helping you because when Peter was telling Jesus that you know that I love you, he was talking about the filial kind of love where you and I practice it. And when I hurt you, you drop me, you dish me because I offended you. That is the filial kind of love. That was the one that Peter was talking there because it wasn't even long. Peter would deny Jesus three times. The same person that have been going about together. And he would just like, I don't know him. How many times have, have we done that? How many times have we, have we refused that we don't know somebody that we know? Or just because that person messed up and we just begin to say, ah, I have done it. I found myself guilty sometimes just because somebody has really done something terrible. I don't want to associate with that person. And I begin to, to say, I, I wasn't really close to that person. Oh, you know, I just, we were just schoolmates. We were just this year. We were friends at that time, but we're no longer friends and all of that. No, that's not the agape kind of love. The agape kind of love is unconditional. It's sacrificial. There is no condition. It means that even when I mess up, you will still afford to love me and come after me and say, sister, I got your back. That's my virtuous kind of woman. Sister, I got your back. We are in this together. We die here like the other, like my sisters used to say. So we die here. We die here. We will get out of this together. We will work it out together. Some, some of the things that make you and I 
not to emit love, not to send out love, is ignorance. We don't know who we are. And so when you don't know who you are, how would you even love somebody else? Because you will be trying to be like that person. You'll be looking at this guy and say, I wish I had her shape. I wish I had her height. I wish I, I had her, her car or whatever, or whatever, her husband or her children. Huh? Because we don't know who we are in Christ. If we know who we are, knowing that our fingerprints, every person is unique then you will not have any problem with, with an, another person. You will just know that there's no other me. And if this person is finding it difficult to, to understand me, it's just because they are not me. And so let me try to, to be at peace with everyone. And am I saying that it's easy to do? No, I struggle sometimes. I've been in a place where I took offense that somebody made, did something that was really hurting to me. I just had to leave and just go and sit somewhere and just say, Father, help me have self-control right now because if I open my mouth, it's not going to be good. I said, Father, help me. Holy Spirit, just help me exercise self-control. Help me exercise self-control because if I open my mouth now, nothing good will come out of it and I will be held responsible for what comes out of my mouth. Ignorance. When we are ignorant, when, when, when you don't know who you are, you will not love. You will not be able to love. Some of the times the ignorance is that we are ignorant of the other person's struggle. We don't know what the other person is going through. I'll give you an example. When we were in secondary school, we had this friend. She was such a beautiful girl. That girl, I would say God took a public holiday to create her. Amazing, beautiful woman. She was my friend. But every time I did not want her to come to my house and spend the night because she does what? She bed wets. She pees on the bed. And so because she pees on the bed, I did not want her to come to my house. And I, for that reason, I will hate her for everything. Hate her, I hated her just for that one fact that she, she, she pees on the bed. The big girls. But little did I know that this could be a manipulation of the enemy from the pit of her. She was super, super beautiful. I'm telling you, I have not seen any girl here that is beautiful like that girl. That girl was super beautiful. I was like, how did God create this woman? She had all the futures that you could think about with your physical eyes in a beautiful woman. She has the height, the shape, the, 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 the face, everything that you could see in a woman. The, she spoke very softly like our sister Juliet here. But she had this problem of bedwetting. In my carnal mind, I was not yet born again by then. Because you would, if, if you're a child of God, you would know that the, the enemy can manipulate you even sometimes that you're sleeping. Then you start dreaming that you're actually using the bathroom, whereas you're on bed. And before you wake up, you realize that you are peeing on yourself. I don't know about you, but those are things that have happened. And I have seen it so many times. We've had to cast out demons and pray for some people to get delivered from things like this. But unfortunately, this friend of ours died at a very young age. She died at a very young age. But I, when I think about it now, I'm like, God, I wish I knew then what I know now. Because it is one Holy Ghost fire, that demon will leave. And she will come and confide into us and those things and we'll start loving at her and make a mockery of it. Ah, God forbid bad thing. Another thing that makes us not to really love people is half-truths. Half-truths. You know when you know something just partially, you don't know the whole story. When you don't know the whole story about something, somebody tells you something, or you just know the other side, or I just come and tell you that, oh, this person, oh, Mercy did this, and you just go, boom, you hate Mercy. You have not even listened to her own part of the story. Your enemies, or my enemies become your enemies. The world will never have peace if, if, if my enemies are your enemies. If you are my friend and you see that I am hating on this person, you should be the bridge that each and every one of us, the both of us used to cross and meet each other. If you join me in hating on my enemies, then the world will not be at peace. And that's why there's so many problems on earth now because we just come here and our friend is, is angry with this person and then we join it. We just join the party because it's this person's enemy is my enemy. No, they are enemies. Oh, my friend's enemies are not my enemies. No. 
be the one that brings people together, not the one that scatters. It means that if somebody tells you that I'm not, I don't talk with this person. Uh, don't just wave it, just brush it aside. Go and sleep on it and maybe pray about it. I say, Father, I need to bring these people together. Teach me. Don't just hurry about it. I need to bring these people together. How do I do it? You know, you get to a position where you make a conscious decision that I will go make peace with my enemies. I will go spread love. Half truths will cause a lot of hatred, will make you not to love people. Because you have heard something about that person from somebody that you did not even verify. Thank you, Sister Jerry. Be a love bridge. Be a love bridge that the cross on it to need in the middle. One sided story, they just make love just goes out. You know how you're married and somebody comes and tells you that your husband is dating this person? Boom, you start trouble. Half truth. That you have not even verified or something. Another thing that makes us not to love is because, like I said, that was the first point that I started with is that we are hurting. You are hurting in the inside of you. And so when you are hurting, you hurt other people. And that's why I started with that point to say that the unlovable, let's treat tonight the unlovable as ourselves. That we don't love ourselves, so let's start by loving ourselves. Because it's our love for other people that counts. When we spread love, that is what counts. That is legacy that we're actually leaving behind. But when we hate ourselves, we can't. There's nothing we can do about it. One of the things that will make us not to love is unforgiveness. It is a big one. It is a big one. Unforgiveness will cost you so much. People will go to hell for unforgiveness, my dear sisters. People will go to hell for unforgiveness. A lot of people. I have seen people talk about a, 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 a vision and dreams that they had about the rapture or about a, a trip to heaven and they could not enter because of unforgiveness. I've had so many testimonies about that. What is it that somebody did to you that you cannot forgive them? You know, there used to be some of those family members that you have a problem with them, they'll tell you that you and I will only meet in heaven. <laughs> that you and I will only meet in heaven. If you are that kind of person that is saying that, eh, know that you will not even have a place in heaven. There's not going to be any meeting for you. Meet in her kitchen, actually. You meet in the kitchen in her. You know how hot that will be. There's no heaven that you say that I will not talk with you. We will only talk in her. No. You guys will be talking in her. Unforgiveness. Oh, I was abused when I was young. I was abused or oh, this or oh, this happened to me. And so for that reason, I will never forgive my abuser. Guess what? Maybe the abuser that you, are, you, 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 you have buried in your mind has already gone somewhere and, and repented and, and making his way to heaven. And you are there keeping them in your heart. Those are some of the unlovables. I'm sure I've shared this story here so many times about uh, uh, a story uh, about a genocide in Rwanda. That a woman and her husband they were running and hiding, running from, from the rebels, they're hiding in the church. The husband was actually a pastor. And, 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 and those rebels came in and they butchered her husband in front of her. Butchered the husband to death. Butchered him until he died. They did not kill her. And after the genocide was over and the way, those people, some of them, those rebels were in jail and all of that. And, they, and then Rwanda was what it is now and they were forgiving each other. And she, that boy came to that woman and asked for forgiveness. <laughs> that boy, the person who butchered the husband in front of her, she could not even recognize, but the boy recognized her. But this woman took that boy as, his, as her son and lived with her. The day that I watched that story, I told myself that what is it that somebody has done to me that I will never forgive that person? I made up my mind, I said, it doesn't matter what, I will forgive. 
Because when, when, when even if you have one person that you're dealing with that unforgiveness on, somehow it finds its way to affect your whole life into other things. You think that it's just one person that I will never forgive, but that thing is affecting you in every other relationship somehow. Somehow it will affect you in every other relationship. Find it in your heart to forgive. Let's do it together. Sometimes it would take so many trials. Sometimes we have to try it so many times before we forgive. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Another thing is our past experiences. You know how sometimes you've been abused, maybe in a marriage, and then, and then you step out of that marriage and then you say, I am never going to get married again. Because you just feel that all men are the same. I used to say to myself that if I get out of this one, I am not doing it again. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke because the past, if you allow the past experiences to affect you to that extent, that you carry them like a bag of rotten tomatoes throughout your life. They will stink. They will stink and guess what? The person that will be stinking is you because you'll be passing around everybody that will smell it. So don't allow your past experiences to make you say, ah, I'm never gonna love, the, I'm never gonna, or you, you say, ah, I'm never gonna deal with a white guy. I'm never gonna marry a, a, a guy from this country or from this tribe or from this place because guys, people from this tribe are like this. People, because one or two or a few dealt with you badly. And so for that reason, you hate everybody that comes from this particular tribe, tribe or from this particular village or from this particular country. Not a good idea because you're gonna have love issue or love issues with people that come from a specific place just because somebody has dealt with you. Am I saying that just go back there and be loving everybody? No, you have to apply wisdom. You have to apply wisdom in everything, especially when somebody has offended you before. If somebody has, has caused you so much pain, I'm not saying that, hey, just run and go back to where you dropped it and pick it up and begin to walk. No, you have to apply wisdom. Because loving somebody doesn't mean that when you love them, you have to do the same thing that you were doing with those people. No, you, you're loving them to make sure that that pain is gone. That when you think about those people, you don't feel the pain anymore. It means that if you had that abusive husband, maybe that chopped off your hand or your, your, uh, so, some part of your body and you guys are divorced or something, you can forgive them. But, 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 but you keep that relationship that are forgiving you, you're not necessarily obliged to go back to it. Unless you, you feel it in your heart and, and, and really convinced that, yes, I can go back to it. But love, but the Bible says love conquers all in Corinthians. It says that it is patience. It is gentle, it is kind. There is no law against it. It's not, you can, they cannot arrest you for loving. It's not a crime to love. And so tonight, as, as, as we round up our message, and as we round up, this is the last one for the month of February. I want us to just begin to ponder in our hearts, just begin to think in our hearts, what is it that I'm struggling with? I want Sister Angie, can you just lift up your voice and, and, and just worship God and just love on God, just sing a love song to the Lord as, as, as we all stay on mute and just, and just listen to, to you. Just, just use your angelic voice and, 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 and minister unto the Lord how much we love. Him, <clears throat> You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And we're loved by you. It's who you are. It's who you are. 
It's who you are, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And we're loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Oh, you are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard. The tender whispers of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And we're loved by you. It's who I am, it's who we are, it's who we are. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect. You are perfect in mm. all of your ways. Perfect, you are perfect in all of your ways. Mm. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, amen. Thank you. Thank Let be long shared amongst us. Let there be love be not right. Now let your love dwell in our midst and cause us, O Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love mm. that is real let there be love shared amongst us let there be love let there be love let there be love shared amongst us let there be love in our hearts, now let your love fill in our midst, and cause our soul Lord, to arise, give us a fresh understanding, the brotherly love. That is real. Let there be love shared amongst us. Let there be love. The love of God is so wonderful. The love of God is pure. Is for the rich and the poor, the young and the old. The love of God is pure. Oh, oh, to the 
Yes, yes. Oh, come on, love, in the truth of God's word. Let us be love. Share Moses and let us be love. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let your love dwell in our midst and cause us, O oh Lord, to Give us a fresh heart, yeah. in our brotherly love. That yeah. is real. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love. Let there be peace. Oh. Let there be yeah. peace.